What's up guys, it's Messed Up Swede. Right now I'm checking out a kid nerd video. This one is the Untold Gang War in Central London. EC1 versus N1. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know about these EC1 and N1. I don't think I've heard that before when it comes to like rap or like beef and stuff. But I guess we'll see, man. Also, I just made a Discord, links in the description, go join that, and don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let's go. There's always debates on the most dangerous side of London, and depending on the year it... Yeah, that's a lot of areas, man. It's nuts, honestly, when you see it like that. Normally yeah. alternates between east, south, north and west But no one really tends to put central London in that category Today we'll be getting into a deadly war between two neighbouring areas In the centre of the capital A feud which many wouldn't notice at all Let's get into the video Don't forget to go subscribe to Kid Nerd as well And go like the original video man Nowadays, central London is packed full of expensive restaurants, tourist attractions, and the ultra-rich who can afford to live so close to the action. But it wasn't always like this. During World War II, central London was heavily bombed by the Germans in efforts to destroy Britain's public morale, leaving much of London destroyed, and resulted in many families sending their children to the countryside which wasn't as affected. But after World War II, a lot had changed in London. There was a big industrial decline, leaving many factories and businesses in central London which had not been destroyed, empty. The local government decided instead of leaving these buildings abandoned, they would turn them into cheap council estates, where people who had been left homeless from the Blitz, and also immigrants who was brought into the country to rebuild it, could live in. The government also strategically built these council estates near where the wealthy would live, to prevent London's pre-war issue of social divide, in hopes that the rich and poor would integrate with each other more. These low-income houses bred quite a bit of crime in the 50s and 60s, with organised crime firms using these estates as pretty much headquarters to play out their illicit activities, while specific sides and areas in London had their own gangs that would control their territories. One I'm not gonna lie, it's crazy when you see like this, he said in World War 2 it got bombed down like a lot of London, but man it's been like, what is it now, like 7, 80 years almost? But still, that's not that long. Like, if you look at London right now, like, yeah, it's crazy how much changes, man. Specific sides and areas in London had their own gangs that would control their territories. One of the biggest firms coming from central London was the notorious Clerkenwell Crime Syndicate, which is an organisation set up by a few brothers who were said to be the most powerful crime families in the UK ever, controlling much of London's drug market mainly in the 80s and 90s. Their territory was in the EC1 postcode, right in the centre of the capital. Nowadays, many council estates near the centre of London have either been demolished or hit with a massive spike in rent prices to force low income families to move out. But the EC1 area still has quite a fair bit of low income neighbourhoods floating about, like the Bourne it looks kind of different, but yeah, I wouldn't say it looks very nice though. In King Square Estate, but long gone are the days of crime families ruling over EC1. A new gang has now emerged. We go by the name Easy Cast or just straight EC1, which is made up of a few different estates around the area, who all have separate but linked up cliques. The Easy Cast gang started hitting headlines in the early 2010s after catching multiple different cases for numerous high scale robberies, ranging from higher end jewelry store heists to car. When I was 17, I um, wanted to be done. Um back to street just outside ranging from higher end jewelry store highest to car theft. In fact, to street Hang on, let me read ranging these, from high armed easy cash gang face jail for breaking into 17 shops. Member sentenced to a total of almost 20 years. Okay. 
and jewelry store then for 12 years as well yes to car theft in fact the street just outside ec1 called essex road was actually ranked the third highest in the country for vehicle theft essex road is in the n1 postcode a postcode which also has a few different clicks which are all linked up mainly in the essex road cali road and hotston which have all had a long lasting i feel like i've heard cali road before linked up mainly in the Essex Road, Cali Road and Hotston, which have all had a long lasting feud with the nearby post called EC1. This feud all started after a pub dispute between two young men. It was April the 14th 2010 when local football rivals Arsenal and Tottenham of of course it's a football derby facing each other this was a big event in the area with the majority supporting either arsenal or tottenham many pubs and bars were full of fans watching the game one of these pubs being on cali road called the thornhill arms a 20 year old man called sam fitzgerald was at attendance this day alongside his older brother but while his older brother was at the bar ordering a drink sam stepped out the pub when he saw another man across the street he had issues with in the past after a few words between each other a one-on-one -on -one fight ensued with both men trading punches towards each other in front of a crowd for the people outside the pub but the fight would take a turn when 22 year old anthony leather would strike sam with a golf club breaking the club in two anthony then pre um. proceeded to stab sam with the broken club causing a fatal wound that unfortunately would take sam's life sam was a RIP man. Love and respected young man in his area. And many people from the N1 postcode, especially Essex and Cali Road, grieved his loss massively. It's not exactly clear how, but Sam's death caused big frictions between groups in EC1 and N1, causing a lot of back and forth issues between the group of boys, which started getting more and more violent. This was at a time between 2008 and 2015, when many younger kids living especially near Essex and Cali Road started jumping on the roads both areas had quite a tight-knit community but a couple high profile murders left many traumatized from the area the first being the murder of 16 year old ben kinsella in 2008 ben was the younger brother of successful actress brooke kinsella who some may remember played the character of kelly in eastenders ben just like brooke had aspirations of acting and even featured in a few small roles on television but unfortunately these dreams were cut short on the 28th of june 2008 Eight. On this day, Ben was celebrating the end of his GCSE exams with a couple friends at a local pub. The friends he was with and another group of young men got into a verbal altercation at the pub, which resulted in Ben being stabbed 11 times while he was walking home, an attack which he sadly didn't survive from. Another tra RIP man. Traumatizing event occurred also just a month before the murder of Sam Fitzgerald, which was the murder and assault of one of Sam's friends called Jesse Wright. Jesse was a 16 year old schoolgirl who was assaulted and murdered in cold blood by another man um. who lived in the area. These events in a short period of time left a lasting effect on the young N1 community. Many of the older figureheads in the area started campaigning for change through many peaceful protests and talks to the government, like Ben Kinsella's family who set up a charity called the Ben Kinsella Trust, which actually managed to pass through a law to raise the mandatory life sentence for knife related murders from 15 years to 25. But while the older okay. generation were trying to put a stop to the violence, the younger generations were starting to ignite. It. Spouts of violence were starting to become more and more common between EC1 and N1 groups, and it wasn't long before another tragedy was struck once again. It was the 27th of February 2015 when 15 year old Alan Cartwright. Right, was red a lot of young guys man and girls but Damn, on his bicycle through Cali Road with a group of his friends. But what they didn't know was lurking on the pavement was a group of boys from EC1 waiting for them to ride past. When Alan and his friends got close enough, the group of boys cornered them and managed to tackle two of Alan's friends, stealing their bikes in the process. But Alan and one of his other friends managed to flee the scene on their bikes. Alan continued to ride his bike until he got outside the nearby swimming pool, where he stopped and suddenly collapsed. Not really realizing that while he was riding his bike he had been stabbed in his chest by one of the boys oh. by the time paramedics came to the scene sadly there was nothing they could do just like a lot of
Um, R.I.P. man. Other deaths in the area. Alan's murder got a lot of media attention, especially after Alan's sister made an emotional appearance on the Jeremy Cow show, talking about how much damage Alan's death done to their family. And when CCTV footage of the murder was posted on YouTube, many people expressed their frustration with the increased frequency of NAF related murders across London. One of the boys accused of being involved was 18 year old Joshua Williams. Around a week after the murder, alongside his parents he handed himself in with his mum telling an officer he was involved in the murder but when it came to trial he had a different story claiming he was at a youth club instead this was quickly shut down by the judge yeah that's not gonna work man <laughs> so you walk in admitting the crime and then you change your story to you as at a youth club Hey, finding him guilty and sending him to a minimum of 21 years this was also one of the first known cases in the uk where a youtube comment claiming just to be the perpetrator was used in evidence now oh damn a youtube comment claiming he was the guy how is that even used as evidence man that's weird. But the EC1 and N1 postcodes both span through multiple boroughs, being Islington, okay. Camden, and Hackney. Oh, okay. And with each borough having its own issues and politics, EC1 and N1 are in the thick of all of it. Both gangs have different alliances and rivalries throughout the boroughs, and one of these rivalries between N1 and another gang in Hackney called Red Pitch turned fatal in 2015. Red Pitch are a gang in between both Islington and Hackney which used to have a big reputation for violence. The feud between them and N1 escalated in the summer of 2015. It was June the 10th in Nightingale Park in Islington. The weather was hot, kids were playing in the field, and a 17 year old from Essex Road called Damn commercials, man. Steph was enjoying the nice summer's day with his friends, not knowing tragedy was round the corner. A stolen scooter started riding through the park in the evening, with a couple teenagers on the back and front screaming RP in reference to the Red Pitch gang. When Steph and his friends saw them, they started to disperse outside the park. But unfortunately, while making their way out, Steph tripped over, leading to one of the boys jumping off the back of the scooter and stabbing Steph twice in his leg and chest with a zombie killer knife. Steph was rushed to a local hospital but unfortunately he didn't survive the boy suspected R.I.P. man. Actors for the attack was a 17 year old called Blaze Lewinson, who was actually in between GCSE exams while the attack played out. After hearing news about Steph not surviving the attack, he fled to Bristol and tried to book a flight to Spain, but it wasn't long before he was caught and found guilty. This was at a time when a lot of change was coming to London. On the back of London's 2012 Olympic success, tourism to the UK took quite a sharp increase, and now pressure was on for inner city boroughs to start taking in action on the crime plague in the city islington was one of these focuses i mean it's it's kind of shit as well when you have to point to like oh they gotta clean the city up because of tourism like yeah sure but didn't you like fix it because people are dying I am not because of tourism. Boroughs to start taking action on the crime plague in the city. Islington was one of these focuses, which makes sense considering EC1 and N1's gang war is literally taking place in the middle of some of London's biggest tourist attractions and nightlife. So the borough set up a program for the youth called the Islington's Integrated Gangs Team, which is essentially a system which connected known gang members around the area with multiple lines of support, pairing them up with mental health specialists and job opportunities for any that will take it while also sometimes taking youth offenders out of their comfort zones i mean this always sounds good on paper like i think kids should have these type of like assistance and that but i, I honestly like i just can't i i can't see a guy that's involved in a gang like taking these types of opportunities man just like from what you hear from guys that are from that type of life and that like yeah, that does not sound likely, man. 
for any that will take it while also sometimes taking youth offenders out of their comfort zones sending them on trips out of the city to experience that there's more to life than what's going on in the area there's no doubt that the program probably had good effects on a few individuals but with a string of violent attacks yet to soon follow it was clear that it was going to take a lot more to defuse the ongoing feud the 25th of february of 2017 was en route to be a normal friday night in islington like every friday many flocked to upper street in n1 to live out their weekend on a street full of bars clubs and restaurants one of these people being a 28 year old father of two called jonathan mcphillips he was enjoying a night out with his friends parked up on the same road was also a few teenagers from essex road who knew jonathan from the area but as the night was coming to an end and people were starting to leave the clubs and bars trouble was lurking around the corner just after midnight a group of masked boys from ec1 were walking through upper street and they were heading straight for the car for the Vessage road boys an altercation broke out between the two groups in full view of the busy street leading to one of the 17 year olds being stabbed in the midst of all the madness jonathan saw what was going on and attempted to break up the fight between the boys but while trying to stop the fight and prevent anyone else from being hurt jonathan was stabbed in the chest which gave him it's always the guy that tries to stop the thing that gets killed man always man R.I.P. Stop the fight and prevent anyone else from being hurt. Jonathan was stabbed in the chest, which gave him a wound he would not survive from, sadly causing another big loss to the community. Musically, both sides have had small stints in the UK drill scene. Back when UK drill was still fresh in the first half of the 2010s, a rapper from EC1 called MJ was making a fair bit of noise on the scene. He was known to make regular disses towards the I don't think I've heard of him. And one groups in his tunes. But eventually moved out to America to pursue his dreams of playing football. Cali Road mm. also had a dual rapper coming up called Rashi. But his career wouldn't last long after being sentenced to 27 years. After an attempted murder on a 16 year old. Damn. But probably the most promising rapper to come out of the beef. Was a rapper called Cillian. Yeah I was thinking he might be from there man. But I haven't heard of him in a long time either. From EC1, he burst on the scene with his single Talk of the Town and drummed up a lot of attention due to him not looking like a stereotypical drill rapper. His song Talk of the Town also had a lot of eyes watching in his area due to a fatal stabbing of another young man called Nedim from Cali Road just a few months before his release, which a few boys from EC1 were originally arrested for. But Cillian kind of jumped off music a few years ago after a video of him leaked on snapchat denying he's involved in the beef nowadays the situation between the two areas has slowed down quite a bit gentrification has forced many families to move out to the outskirts of london and with heavy police presence and cctv cameras around central london most people who are still keeping this feud alive don't end up lasting long before being sent to prison but with so much deep history and hatred between the two areas, it will be highly unlikely for the violence to completely stop anytime soon. Just before Christmas in 2022, another young life was lost. This time a 16 year old RIP, man. boy from EC1 who went by the name of Jams. He was brutally stabbed to death. Delaying any possible peace on the streets of central London. It's been your boy Kid Nerd and peace out. Yeah man, this video was decent man. I just feel like I don't know, it didn't really feel like a gang war. I'm not gonna lie, man. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it didn't fully say, like, if the guys that were killed and that were involved or not and stuff like that. But, yeah, man, I guess. But, yeah, always interesting to see, though, about different parts of London and a bit of history in this as well. So, yeah, man. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I'm out. Peace.